Hi, my name is Madison, and I'm going to be talking about um, carbohydrate absorption. Um, so in our class, we discussed um, carbohydrate absorption in depth with GLUT2 and GLUT4 um, specifically, and we briefly touched on SGLT1. Um, I wanted to kind of go more in depth into SGLT1 as it's an important process, and um, I think this diagram can be a supplement to our education um, on um, glucose absorption in the small intestine. So anyway, so um, for those who, who don't know, or here's a little, a little bit more introduction to the topic, a little uh, background. So um, this diagram is taken from the small intestine. So we, it's part of the alimentary canal. Um, we're right here. This is the lumen of the small intestine. So if you're thinking you've consumed food, it's going down through the stomach, and then now it's in the small intestine. This is the inner tube in which it's contained. So over here we have the apical membrane um, with the brush, the brush border, and it's got all these enterocytes. This is a very zoomed in um, picture of what you know a transporter on an enterocyte looks like. Very not to scale, but Besides the point, this is the apical membrane. Here's the enterocyte, so this is a small intestine cell. And here we have the brush border membrane, um, which leads to the blood. Um, so here we have the lumen of the small intestine. Food would be going in this direction. Um, okay, well, I made a little arrow. Um, so food would be going in that direction. So... Um, Um, okay, so food would be going in the downward um, direction. Sorry, I have to turn on the draw for this. Okay, so food would be going in the down direction, down here. And so um, here we have glucose, galactose, and fructose, which are the three um, – monosaccharides that make up our diet. So they make up polysaccharides and disaccharides. And um, we have three main ones that are part of the food that we eat and that we digest to get to these base monosaccharides so that we can absorb them. Absorb them. And so we have fructose, galactose, and glucose. Glucose is the main one that um, we all know about and that um, is m almost well, all the monosaccharides are at some point broken down into glucose to be used um, for body pro bodily processes. Um, so at low lumen concentrations of glucose and galactose, SGLT1 is what is used um, to transport these into the enterocyte. So when there's low concentrations, one or the other one will be using SGLT1 um, to get into the enterocyte. So it, this kind of is kind of confusing, but only one either glucose or galactose molecule will um, be able to attach to SGT, SGLT1. Um, additionally, with any molecule, any monosaccharide that attaches here, we'll be using um, two sodium to cross those, to cross one of the monosaccharides into the enterocyte. Um, so this, this SGLT1 technically uses energy, but um, and it has to create, has to use sodium to move things into the cell. So the SGLT1, um, you know, will let it into the enterocyte. The molecules will move by themselves um, down this way to GLUT2. Um, and then through GLUT2, they will go into the portal vein or into the blood. Um, the sodium molecules will, will move through the enterocyte and move out of um, the enterocyte through the sodium potassium pump. So the sodium concentration is generally high in the lumen, and so it's just taking sodium and putting it out, and potassium is being put into the enterocyte um, to create that gradient um, to be able to move those molecules across. So, so in low concentrations of glucose or galactose, SGLT1 is used to transfer those um, monosaccharides into the cell. These Monosaccharides are then put through GLUT2 in the enterocyte to move into the portal vein or to the blood and to the liver and different places all around the body, depending on what molecule it is. So GLUT5 always takes in fructose. GLUT5 is a passive transport molecule, or it doesn't require 
um, the sodium like SGLT1 does. So fructose moves in through GLUT5 and fructose goes the same way out of the enterocyte through GLUT2. So technically, all of these monosaccharides use GLUT2 on the basal lateral membrane to move out into the blood and um, into circulation into the body. Fructose and galactose will then move to the liver to be transported, to be um, manipulated and probably put back into glucose. So um, all molecules are moved out of GLUT2 and into the portal vein. So um, I think that this may help um, anyone kind of um, confused about the transport of um, uh, the transporter SGLT1. Um, I think, you know, I hope that this makes more sense. Um, this is extremely significant bodily process that we're able to move glucose, galactose, and fructose into the enterocyte. Um, that's how we energize. That's how we extract um, these monosaccharides from our food um, and use it for um, functions that we do every day. Okay, thank you.